don't even feel like doing my intro today. Just looking at the character that we just got as the next character. You guys already see the thumbnail. You already see my title. Um, yeah, let's just get on to it. So our next UR character that's gonna be introduced is none other than you are Cero. Can't believe I'm gonna be saying that. I don't even remember the guy's name until recently. Then we have another uh, Kirishima that's being introduced to the game literally right after we had the anniversary one. And then we have a free-to-play Kaminari being introduced as well into the game. Before we even start any of this, please let me know down below in the comments. How do you feel about this character being a UR? Like, I know we're just coming off the anniversary, so I feel like they gotta drop something that isn't as hype. But to drop this character right here, I just feel like is a little bit too bland. And if there's no hype content coming around with this character, it just doesn't make sense at all. Now, I know the reason why they released this character, and it's probably because of the UR all for one. They want to make a character that's able to destroy him and make it to where he's a great benefactor. But still, I just don't see the hype in this character whatsoever to make him a UR. But let, let, let's enough about that. Let's get into the video. So, Seto, what are you able to do? His plus ultra move, which is the taping combo, deals 650% damage to a single opponent. This skill lands a bullseye if the opponent's speed is decreased, decreases the opponent's power by 30% for 3 turns, then decreases the opponent's speed by 30% for 3 turns, then he has a medium chance of binding the opponent for 2 turns. So already right off the bat, his plus ultra skills are looking very clean right there. Not only is he decreasing power, but he's also decreasing speed as well, and he's getting bullseye automatically. So that's great right there. I'm telling you guys, they probably made this man just for all for one. First action skill is going to be the barricade tape. High chance of binding all opponents for one turn. Decreases the speed of all opponents by 30% for three turns. And then also gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit and the cooldown is for five turns. Now if you were to pair it with the Shoto support memory, the new year one we got, that will be decreased to around three turns. So you could get this a lot more faster. Another thing too, is that you could pair this up with one of the UR Kaminaris and you could be paralyzing and binding opponents for free. Like nothing at all, because I know the Kaminari is two to three turns when you touch him. And then the first Kaminari UR we ever got, the purple one, he can paralyze all opponents on his plus ultra, but you also do get paralyzed as well. It's a risky factor to it, but maybe there's some way to go around it. I don't know. You guys probably do know how to get around that too. Second action skill, which is going to be the Binding Kick, deals 375% damage to a single opponent. The skill lands a bullseye if the opponent's speed is decreased. Decreases the opponent's power by 25% for 3 turns, decreases the opponent's critical hit rate by 35% for 3 turns, and also cancels all of the opponent's temporary speed up effects. Cooldown is for 4 turns. Now, what's crazy about this is that this doesn't just affect characters like, um, like you are, or you are Anniversary Bakugo. It affects other characters that are also, um, damn, I'm trying to remember the name, that are also fantasy characters. like. The fact that Fantasy Eater now is going to have him be deal with a character that's not only binding him but decreasing his speed, that man is not going to be able to build up anytime soon. Same thing with uh, Shoto, the, uh, the Midoriya, all those fantasy characters, this guy is going to be giving them trouble just by binding them and making sure that they do not have their build up effects off rip. So I'm really interested to see how this character is going to play out, if we do pull him. First auto skill is going to be the simple but great to keep the speed of all opponents by 15% for 3 turns when the wave starts. So automatically frame 1 as soon as you enter the battle, he's going to be decreasing speed. So you're already going to be faster than your opponent. Then also increases the character skill impact by 20% when speed is not decreased. So not only does he benefit from speed being decreased, but he also gets a little bit of a buff when his, when his opponent's speed is not as well. So that's a cool benefactor that he has on both of those effects. Uh, second auto skill which is going to be the Outstanding Aerodynamics, increases character speed by 10% for 2 turns every turn, so it's always going to be getting faster and there is no limit to that, so you can just be seeing yourself at 100% speed at turn 12. Wait, do I have the number right? No, not turn 12. Is it? Is it turn 12 or turn 22? I don't know, but once you get to that number of turns, you're going to be fast as hell. Then increases character's defense by 20% when their speed is not decreased. Also lowers not, and I will say lower not, oh my god, my spelling and um, saying stuff today has been horrific. I mean, it always has, but today I just feel it so worse than the others. Lowest chance of all ally UA high class 1A characters uh, becoming bound. Okay, so what if it's to where both of you guys have the settle on your team? Would that effect just automatically be not active, or is it just going to be the same amount of chance that you're able to bind the opponent? 
Yeah, with this character, you really got to see how he plays out. But so far, reading him, I said it. He was going to be a good character because you cannot release him and be like, oh, we got to make him decent or bad. No, you got to make him good because if you want people to summon, that's how it's got to be. He has to be a good character, which he sounds like so far. And I think, personally, he's going to be a great option against All For One. Like, I was preaching about it earlier. Because, as you guys know, All For One is out right now. Which I am trying to do videos on him, but I have been getting my whole... I, was getting, I don't know if I should curse yet or not. Because I don't know how YouTube policy is going to change from here on out. But, you guys already know what I'm going to say. I was going to get my whole behind kick. So, let's just see. Now, next character is the SR Kaminari. He is, I bet, already going to be having the effect of countering defense up all that other shenanigans they never change a kaminari no matter what we could literally make a video about all the kaminaris in the game and i promise you they all do the same thing defense counter and coverage that's all they do so the plus ultra move is going to be the ardent frenzy deals 500 percent damage to a single opponent also increases skill impact by 30 percent if character's defense is higher than the opponent there we go automatically prove my point First action skill, which is going to be Unbreakable Claw, deals 300% damage to a single opponent. Increases skill impact by 25% when character's max HP is increased. Also increases character's defense by 25% for 3 turns. The cooldown is for 4 turns. Second action skill, which is going to be the Red Counter. Gives character the ability to counter for 3 turns after receiving a normal attack. Increases character's max HP by 20% for 3 turns. Increases character's power by 30% for 3 turns. Also gives character a barrier that nullifies 2 hits and the cooldown is for 5 turns. First auto skill which is going to be the Unwavering Courage gives character the ability to cover all allies when using a barrier once per battle. Also increases character's max HP by 30% when HP is below 30%. Then the second auto skill which is going to be Harding to the Max increases defense of all in-type allies by 20%. Also gives character a barrier that nullifies 2 hits every 3 turns up to three times okay so as i said pretty basic that's why i didn't stop at all because he's just doing the same thing that another uh Kirishima would do on the daily but one thing i do like about this character is that he's giving defense to all allies because you're only gonna really use them on a green team let's just be honest here so let's say you're fighting what's a perfect boss let's say usj is too easy let's say a ssv tower boss and you're fighting a red enemy right Perfect guy to throw there right there because not only is he going to be taking hits, but the allies around you are going to be taking hits as well. And this is uncapped, so you're always going to have this in battle and it's not going to go away unless they remove it. I don't know if they can remove buffs like that from the auto skills, but yeah. He's going to be a good character for SR. I just don't get why we're getting another Kirishima. Like, just give that to any other character, I promise you. It's not going to hurt them in any type of way or form. Like, we could use another new SR character, not the same one. So here's the free to character that we are going to be using. It is going to be the Kaminari. Already frame one, you can just tell. Paralysis. Uh, plus ultra move, which is the target. Electro deals 500% damage to a single opponent. Medium chance of paralyzing the opponent for two turns. Also shortens character's action skill cooldown time by one. You guys already know how I feel about um, cooldown time by one. It should be cooldown time by two, but I get it's an SR, so they're not going to make it as crazy. First action skill, which is going to be the Thunderbolt. Deals 600% damage to a single opponent. When character's power is increased, this skill gains piercing shot and increases skill impact by 30. What the hook? This is not real. 11 turns? For an action skill? Nah, there's no way. <laughs> this guy sucks. If there's no way to decrease that, this character automatically, no matter what, sucks. I don't care if he has a broken effect or if there was anything else. I am not waiting 11 turns. For this man to do something what oh my god he's horrible second action skill cooldown time spark increases characters plus ultra gauge by 35 <laughs> percent also certain character action skill cooldown time by two when using a successfully executed skill chain and the cooldown is for four turns so you basically if you combine the plus ultra cooldown time and the action skill cooldown time it's by three but that's still not enough. The minimum you're getting is seven turns. That's still a lot. That's like the first time Ultra Impact came out and we got that Uraraka. And who else had that effect for six or seven turns? I don't remember, but that Uraraka is a prime example of that. First auto skill, which is going to be that's a spirit. Increases character's active skill impact by 10% when used in a successfully executed skill chain up to five times. So you can do this every turn. So by turn five, you're going to have 50%. Okay. 
Second auto skill which is going to be let's just get it done increases characters power by 20% when HP is 50% or higher. Once per battle shortens characters action skill cooldown time by 5 when HP is below 50%. So you want this man to get hit hard so that he's able to decrease it by 5 but that's only one time. I get that he's a free to play SR, but th that that's criminal to give this man eleven turns. There's there's nothing that's gonna save him at all, because once you get that proc of the second auto skill, what happens then? You're still waiting another seven turns just for that to activate. Yeah, this character is useless. I'm sorry. There's no need to grind for him at all. He he's not gonna be that guy. Trust me. So now let's take a look at the support memories. The first part being we are the same. Increases characters match HP by 50% when the battle starts. Increases characters defense by 30% if there are any heroes on the team. And then also increases characters critical hit rate by 40% if there are any villains on the team. So let's take a look at this from level 1. So this goes to 20% and 25%. Then 25% to 30%. Then 30 to 35%. And then the, 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 ugh, sorry, the HP increases by another 5%. So this is a good support memory. I like it. And I love the art too. This is sick right here. Oh my god. I would not be surprised if a lot of Toga or Uraka fans put this as their wallpaper on their PC. It's just that good. Ooh, clean. They always kill it with the artwork, man. Uh, next SR support memory, which is going to be Remember My Principles. Increases character skill impact by 25% when equipped by a hero. Also increases character speed by 35% if Endeavor is on the team. Now... I know a lot of people have the Red Endeavor, so it's going to be automatic proc there. Uh, let's see how it is from level 1. So it's 20 to 25%. Then it changes to 30 on the bottom, 35%, and then the other 5% you're getting once you max it out. So if you want, you can max this out. Or if you don't want to, you don't have to. Any pro heroes that are good right now in the game, I mean, Aizawa's still one of the best in the game, so you can equip it to him and then have the Endeavor that lowers speed. But that's all up to you at the end of the day. Let's take a look at the free-to-play support memory now, which is going to be a workplace full of laughter. It increases character's action skill pack by 30% when equipped by a male character. Also increases character's skill pack by 40% for three turns. Every three turns up to two times. Okay, I like this one right here. This one is good. It has a nice effect of increasing damage and giving you even more damage. I mean, now these people prefer to have other effects on the uh, support memories, but, you know, it's always good just to have a little bit of more extra damage. Maybe this is all you need, just that extra push to cook somebody for free. But with that, that's the first half of the video, looking at the whole character's kit, the support memories, all that good stuff. Now, we're going to go on the Discord and see anything else has been added to the game. So, I'll be right back with that, ready to go. All right, now we are here on the Discord. Let's see if any new information has been added into the game or not. So... First thing we have from Hydro soon, coming soon, and then we have Cero. Now we have also the new case files as well. So case 2, alternate dimension cases where we are able to get these type of characters now into the game. So I've noticed that too, so event characters or free to play characters that you weren't able to get before, you can get in case files. That's awesome right there, I do like that. So the Yukata Kirishima and the In Charge Momo Yayorozu. Now I don't know if they added the All Might or yet or all those other characters that were JP exclusive before the global release. They probably did. I just haven't seen it yet. Which I gotta get back on my case file grind. I'm so sorry guys. I've still been slacking on that. But yeah, don't worry soon. So here we have the new banner that's coming out, which is going to be Midoriya, the Black Whip, and Purple Endeavor. Kind of looks like a, a cool banner to summon on if you are new to the game and you do like these characters. The new case files to solve. We have the VTAL ranking openings coming up soon. And the character stories have been added. That is in the trust levels if you do that. So here we have the Sero. We have his little art thing right there. One of his post ultra animations. I love how seven people put the sleep icon and then nine people put the dead icon. And six put the... <laughs> Going to bed. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> this is Plus ultra animation. Put it to sleep. Link will be in the description. I swear to God this time. I promise you. I will have the link in the description. So uh, there we have the Sero, uh, the Kirishima, the links to those that we just looked at. Championship racing game. Okay, so this story is looking like a whole race. All right. Uh, we got the Kaminari, the laughter memory effect, all the upcoming gift uh, of items. So 100 gems that we're supposed to get on Valentine's Day, which we did get. And then the anime tickets that are still going. Those anime tickets are about to go away once the last episode hits. We only have five episodes left. So that should be like a month uh, a month and a, and a week. That's all we have left of those. So it's five and that's it. We don't got no more of those tickets. Hopefully you guys have been getting lucky with those as well. I've, I've recorded my summons and all I got were dupes. 
The reason why you have not seen anything about those summons, all I've been getting is dupes, and it's ass. So I don't want to post ass on the channel. Uh, so Seto's first unique EX auto skill increases chance of causing binding, gives character speed down, immunity for two turns when the battle starts. Thirty percent chance is the increase. Wait, what? That is this skill. Oh, that's okay. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I got it. So we have the power stage. First floor is going to be Midoriya. Second floor is going to be Bakugo. And then the... Oh, no. These are... Okay. The, these are all the other characters going to be in the floor. So the first floor is going to be Midoriya and Bakugo. Those two. Second one is going to be Overhaul, Toya, and you. I don't know who you is. And then the third floor is going to be All Might by himself. I do remember this stage right here. Okay, okay, okay. And then for the final thing, we have the Case File Season 2 Chapter 1. Also drops the SR Total Victory in the game support memory. Which is a free-to-play support memory as well that I did like the art of back in the day. So with that, that is basically everything that we have with the upcoming settle going into the game. The new case files that we introduced. Everything that's coming after Anniversary. Now let me know, are you hyped for this stuff or are you not hyped for this stuff? Personally, me... I am not hyped for this at all. If you are a Settle fan, congratulations. You finally got the character that you wanted in the game. He is a very good character. I feel like one of the best characters to get to that all for one. The problem is he's just not hyped. Not at all, in my eyes. He's just not that hyped. But with that, guys, I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Peace.